Welcome to Paris. One of the world's most iconic locations is also the host city of one of the world's most iconic judo tournaments. The Paris Grand Slam is the jewel in the crown of the IJF World Judo Tour and annually sees the Accor Hotels Arena full to the brim, creating an electric atmosphere for all of the athletes competing here. It's an event all dream of winning. And with the Olympic Games approaching, some of the sport's top names were in action. Amongst them was the King of Judo, Teddy Renaire, who was here looking to continue his so far successful comeback, and with whom we shot our latest Meet Your Judoka feature. But could Japan's latest challenger end Teddy's 10-year unbeaten streak on home soil? We'll bring you this and all the best action, including the exploits of France's other judo star, four-time world champion Clarisse Agbegnanou. We start with the men's under 60 kilogram division, where world number one Nagayama Ryuju of Japan was in typically explosive form as he threw his way to the gold medal contest. There, he would face young Russian judoka Yago Abuladze, who showed his Tashkent Grand Prix win back in September was no fluke, as he also looked good during the day. And he was on the verge of an upset in the final, as he earned a wazari by pinning Nagayama for over 10 seconds. Now Nagayama would have to come from behind. Your commentator is former world champion Neil Adams. Nagayama has to come from behind now. Knows what he has to do, but he has the skill to do it, that's for sure. Made a mistake. Oh, look at that. And he does fire back. Wazari there. Beautiful Sianagi. Just explodes in with the left Sianagi. Look at the look on his face there. And he's on the same sleeve. Gets an over-rotation, Abuladze just manages to prevent the Ippon. Now then, oh, now then, Nagiyama, I think he's got the other Wazari, yes he has, and that was very, very low. Wasn't sure there whether that was a counter technique, can't use his own back if it is, but look at the lift he gets, I think that was a direct attack. Nagiyama comes from behind to win gold. On hand to award Nagiyama with his gold medal was IJF President Mr. Marius Visa. Also on the podium was 2015 world champion Yeldos Smetov of Kazakhstan, who lit up the arena with a sensational win in his bronze medal contest against Korea's Kim Won Jin, throwing his opponent for Ippon with Uranagi to take the medal in style. At under 90 kilograms, 2018 world champion Nikolaj Shirazadishvili was on fine form as he made it through to the final. His elimination highlight was this thunderous Ippon against Mamadli Mediev of Azerbaijan. Up against him in the final would be Nagasawa Kenta of Japan. Which of these two would earn the adoration of the Paris crowd? Shirazadishvili just getting better and better every round. Slow to start, but now he's picked up. Searching for the big grip, round the back! Oh, look at that! What an hit on that was! The first proper attack there from the Spaniard, and the arm was round the back. He caught the sleeve, and then the hips came across. That was brilliantly taken, and Nagasawa could do nothing about it absolutely showed his class and he took the Japanese in front of a packed stadium here and the crowd love it. There's the arm round the back, he had the sleeve, sleeve first, then the arm round the back, then the hips came across. Look at that, Ukigoshi virtually and he just gets the lift, changes direction and he places it flat onto his back for the biggest dip on and what a place to do it. This crowd really do appreciate good judo and they got it. Mr. René Fazel, president of the Ice Hockey International Federation and IOC member, presented Shirazadishvili his medal. Hot favourite for gold at under 70 kilograms was the home nation's world champion, Mary Eve Gai but she came unstuck against Japan's Nizoe Saki in their semi-final matchup, as she was caught with a fantastic Uchimata for Ippon. 
We'll see how she got on when she fought for bronze later in the program. Facing Nozoe in an all-Japanese final would be Ono Yoko, who saw off world bronze medalist Sally Conway of Great Britain when she also scored Ippon with Uchimata. One of these two would produce a moment for judo fans to savour. Which would it be? This magic moment would come in golden score. This really has been a tight match. They know each other very, very well. You can see that. Two Shidos each on the board. One more and it's going to be all over. They've got to open up. Somebody's got to go for it. Oh, and it's Ono. Ono explodes through. What a seeing Aggie that was. That almost looked like Kata. Brilliantly taken. Look at the crowd. They appreciate it. Hip on seeing Aggie. And it looked as if she was demonstrating for everybody in the audience. It was very, very tight. Two Shidos apiece. Somebody had to do something. Oh no, just explodes in. Look at the support feet there. Absolutely central. Head goes down. And what a rotation to finish it off. Ms. Nadia Komanech, five-time Olympic champion and IJF ambassador, was present to award the brilliant Ono with her gold medal. At over 78 kilograms, Romain Dico of France was in brilliant form. Back from injury and fresh from a win at the Tel Aviv Grand Prix, the 2018 European champion came up with some big judo as she made it through to the final. The 20-year-old Dico showing why France have high hopes for her in the future as she blitzed her way through her elimination contests. It set up a final with the reigning European champion Marina Slutskaya of Belarus. Halfway through the contest, Slutskaya hasn't even been in this contest. Dico looking magnificent all day. What a comeback this is. The winner in Tel Aviv, and now she's the winner here in Paris. And that was brilliant stuff. What a makikomi there. And it was always on the cards. As soon as she got the belt there, leg goes across. Soto makikomi. And she just rotates her onto her back and Dicko wins the gold medal here in Paris. Superb comeback after injury. She wins in Tel Aviv, she wins here in Paris and she looks like she could do some damage at the coming Olympics. Dicko was awarded her medal by Mr. Georgi Gatian, co-founder and vice president of the International Tech Ball Federation. Our number three Ippon from Paris came when world champion Sagi Muki of Israel faced Sharafuddin Boltabayev of Uzbekistan in the quarterfinals of the under 81 kilogram division. Muki really just having a job to find his rhythm, but Bayev always looking dangerous. Can't get near with that. Oh, look at that! Oh, same technique from Boltabayev. And he scores a massive hip on, on the world champion. He went for one direction, then switches it to the Oso to Gary, and flat on his back he goes, Muki, and he didn't know what hit him. Brilliant stuff there from the Uzbek. And the Uzbek team really on the up and up with Iliadis at the helm. Ippon number two featured another Uzbek judoka. Kikmatilok Tureyev, who faced Turkey's Bilal Saloglu for under 73 kilogram bronze. Well, Kaloglu has caused all sorts of problems today. And he is looking so, so sharp. Tureyev has the sleeves. Oh, 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 I think that's all over. What an Oso to Kosoto combination that was. And wow, I said that the Turk had been looking dangerous, and he just didn't get off the mark, did he? Oh, Soto, Kosoto, what an hip on for bronze. There's the Oh, Soto there. Look at the follow through. Just catches the leg on the follow through, and the momentum puts him on his back. At under 70 kilograms, Gay had to steal herself for a bronze medal contest with Swedish judoka Anna Bernholm. This match would produce our number one Ippon. Gahi lost in the semi-final, doesn't quite look at her best. 
Doesn't need to be here though. Now then, what's Burham going to do? Burham, so consistent at this weight. And now she's going to follow through. Oh, she's got the duty. And that was a massive mistake by Gahi. And she arm locks Gahi for Ippon in front of her home crowd. And that was great opportune Newaza. And the transition was superb. Look how pleased she looks, and quite rightly so too. Look at this, she comes around the front, it looks like she's going for Sangaku, and she just takes the arm and falls back onto it for the Jujigatami. Brilliant stuff from the Swede, and she gets the bronze. Such opportune Newaza, and great, great to see the transition from Tachiwaza to Newaza. A massive upset there, the world champion gets well beaten in front of her home crowd. It was business as usual at under 48 kilograms, as Ukrainian wonder kid Daria Bilodiv took gold. The highlight of her day was this big Ippon in her semi-final contest. Her Imperial Highness Princess Tomohito of Mikasa presented her with the gold medal on the podium. Joining her was Melanie Clement of France, who had the Accor Hotels Arena in raptures, as she defeated Spaniard Laura Martinez Abalenda to earn a bronze medal. An amazing moment for Clement, who realised the dream of every French judoka by soaking up the adoration of the crowd. Meanwhile, Kosovo's Distria Krasniki decided to compete at under 52 kilograms, where she duly put in a brilliant performance to take gold, throwing Italy's Odette Giofrida with a foot sweep for a Wazari score to win in the final. On hand to present her medal was President of the Association of Summer Olympic International Federations, Mr. Francesco Ricci-Bitti. Also on the podium was 2017 world champion Shishimi Ai of Japan, who impressed with a flashy Uchimata Ippon in her bronze medal match against Astrid Neto of France. Canada's world champion Krista de Gucci surprised no one when she took gold in Paris. In the final, she defeated 2017 world champion George Shiren Sumia by Wazari. She was presented her medal by Mr. Gergé Guyash, Minister of the Prime Minister's Office of Hungary. World champion Madeleine Malonga took gold for France at under 78 kilograms, defending her title from last year. South Korea were on top at under 66 kilograms with 2015 world champion Ahn Bao defeating his compatriot Kim Lim Won in the final. 2017 world champion Hashimoto Soichi of Japan was in action at under 73 kilograms and faced Kazakh Zansei Smagalov in the final, who looked to be in great form. But Hashimoto would prove too strong for him, countering for a scrappy Wazari to win his third Paris Grand Slam title and retain his mantle as a fan favourite inside the Accor Hotels arena. Belgium's Matthias Casse defeated Muki's conqueror Bolta Boev to take under 81 kilogram gold. Whilst the inform Israeli judoka Peter Palchik was once again on the mark, eventually defeating Georgia's Valam Lipitiliani in the final to take his second World Judo Tour gold in two weeks. The over 100 kilogram category was hotly anticipated since it marked the return to Paris of French icon Teddy Renaire. The 10-time world champion and double Olympic champion is the king of judo, having unleashed a decade of dominance unparalleled anywhere in the sport's history. 2019 marked his return to the World Judo Tour as he prepares for the defense of his Olympic title in Tokyo. Though not quite as dominant as he was, Renaire is still undefeated in 10 years and boasts two goals from two events back on the tour. We caught up with him and can now bring you the ultimate Meet Your Judoka feature with Judo's ultimate champion. I started judo at five, but I didn't just do judo, I did lots of other sports. Football, basketball, climbing, swimming, modern jazz, squash. But the thing I loved straight away was judo. My favourite throw is Uchimata. It's a very difficult technique to learn, but it's amazing once you get it, when you manage to launch your opponent. 
My favourite Neiwaza technique is Hon Kezagatami. It's one of the first things we learn when we start judo, and in practice, when you attack, it's usually the first thing you land in. My best memory on the IJF World Tour is the Masters in Rabat. It was one of the most beautiful events. I love this country. It's Drumline. I love that film. I'll go with Drake. Shot for me. My favourite food is couscous. I love that. Because there are lots of different ways to prepare it and every time I never leave anything. I love it. I have a nickname, but it comes from my name. Teddy Bear. Winnie the Pooh. The bear Pokemon, the bear child, there you go. My hidden talent is motor racing, so if I can find time, I do that. I've got plenty of rivals, every opponent against me is a rival. My judo hero is Kosei Inoue. The excellence, the beauty, the dominance in judo. I think everybody loved it when Kosei Inoue was a champion. And in football, I like Ronaldinho a lot. He's a magician. My favourite judoka right now is Ono. He has a good mentality and he is a great champion. I'll continue to be a patron and ambassador for different associations, but above all, I'll find time to be a good father who gives a good education to his children. And I'd like to go into business. Why do I love judo? I think it's a big family. We learn lots of things, to live together, to exceed ourselves together. We are a very close family, even if we each fight for our country. Once the competition is over, we are all very close. It's also a sport with enormous values, which teaches you to exceed yourself in sport, like judo, but also in everyday life. After winning his first two contests, René stretched his unbeaten streak to 154 matches. He would then face Kagiura Kokuro, the latest talent that Japan have found in their quest to break Rene's stranglehold on the sport. His diminutive stature and his style of judo proved tricky for Rene in their previous match at the Brasilia Grand Slam. In 10 years, nobody has beaten him. In 12 years, nobody has scored on him. Could Kagiura succeed where all those before him have failed? Wow, golden score, 25 seconds in, and Teddy Renner, this is the third golden score for him. He has got a mountain to climb, he really has. And Kagura, now then, oh, he's gone over. Teddy Renner gets countered. That Uchimata Sakeshi has broken the 154 match unbeaten record. And Teddy Renner, look at that, how he goes back to the middle. He attacks fully with the Uchimata there. Kagura, who was moving all the time, just sidesteps it, uses the Tewaza to take him onto his back, and he gets the Wazari. That Wazari has created history. Nobody has even scored on him for 12 years. And now, wow, he gets thrown or countered. He fully commits and he knew and you could see it all day, that he was struggling with his timing, and the timing wasn't quite there, the condition wasn't quite there, and in the end, Kagura manages to take him onto his side and to defeat the legend of Teddy Renner. Teddy Renner, absolutely the greatest, without a shadow of a doubt, but credit to Kagura, he manages to do it, and the great Teddy Renner, takes it like a true champion and he will go away now and he will prepare for the Olympic Games that is coming up. So that's it. History has been made. Finally, René has been beaten. But in defeat, he showed his class as a champion. 
Now his real challenge begins, to come back stronger than before. Henk Grohl of the Netherlands would face Kagiura in the final. The highlight of his day, this fancy foot sweep against Kim Min Jong of South Korea. Could Grohl upset Kagiura the Kingslayer in the final? Well, Kagiura, he must be on an absolute high, but he's got to do it here now, yet again. But Henk Grohl is so experienced. That big arm over the back there. Oh! That Koji Gary has put an end to Kagura's march to this title. And that was absolute brilliance. What a change of direction that was. A beautiful Koji Gary. And he takes him onto his back. It was given to Wazari. And now it's been changed to an hip arm. And look at that. Hank Grove celebrates. And it just goes to show how fickle Judo can be. Kagura beats Teddy Renner. He beats the Russian in the semi-final and then loses to Grohl by a beautiful Koji Gary. And he does it, well, from a grip over the back and he directs him onto his back. It was beautifully controlled and Kagura will have to be satisfied with silver. This man here, Hank Grohl of the Netherlands, wins gold. I think if we'd have looked at the draw at the beginning of the day, having Hank Grohl on top, Teddy Renner not even in the medals, you'd go, wow, the odds of that happening are great. But look at that. He's done enough. He celebrates with his family. And Hank Grohl is the champion. We end with the under 63 kilogram division, which saw France's other judo star in action. Clarisse Agbegnanou is a hero and a role model, just like Renaire. And with four world titles, she is also a force to be reckoned with. Her opening contest showed just why she is such a fan favourite. When we ask judoka who their favourite other player is, one name comes up time and time again, Clarisse Agbegnanou. She is an idol, and judo like this is the reason. Just as expected, Agbegnanou was through to the final to compete for her sixth Paris title. Facing her there would be Nabokura Nami of Japan, who became the first person to defeat Agbegnanou in two years at the World Masters back in December. She looked strong on her way to the final, where she would be hoping to prove herself a thorn in Agbegnanou's side once more. Agbegnanou pushing forwards. Nabokura knows that she has to go forward. She knows she has to do something. Two Shidos on the board. She's the last one to beat Agbeg Nanu at the World Masters. Oh, it's not going to happen this time. What a counter that was. Agbeg Nanu counters her in front of her home crowd. And this wonderful lady has done it. What a brilliant judoka she is. She pulls it out the bag when she has to. I remember her saying it's only one match lost when she lost to Nabakura, but she's pulled it back this time in style, in front of her home crowd, and she gets the ip on she fully deserves. Nabakura was behind on two Shidos. She knew she had to do something. Look at the change of direction. Look at the hips going up there, but it's the Tewaza. The hands that drive her onto her back there and the momentum means that she scores a really important hip on and this fantastic lady has done it again. The world champion has showed her class and the crowd absolutely love her. So that's it from a bittersweet event in Paris as it marked the end of Renaire's incredible reign. Yet it also showed that the sport has plenty of other heroes too. Next, we'll be in Dusseldorf for a German judo party and another Grand Slam.